the beginning of the end. Yes, sir. As I came in here today, I came in here to speak a word of declaration. And please understand, when you start talking like that, when you start saying, I'm at the beginning of the end, you're not just talking and you're not just having another little bit of church. Hello, somebody. Because, you know, we, we come to church and we have all these colloquialisms, we have all these church phrases and things like that, and we get excited about them. But, ladies and gentlemen, there has to be a moment where your spirit takes a, uh, grabs a hold to the word of the Lord that's being declared over you, and you declare, this is a prophetic word for me. Somebody in here, now this may not be for everybody, but somebody in here is going to open your mouth one more time. And when you declare it this time, you're going to get it down in your spirit and you're going to believe you're at the beginning yes. of the end. <laughs> if you, so if you don't mind just one last time, those that believe along with me Jesus. to declare, I am, I am at, the beginning at the beginning of the end. Of the end. One thing that's very interesting about us as human beings is that we like comfort. Mm -hmm. We like to live in what makes us comfortable. Yeah. It's okay if you give us a little bit of change and you gradually feed it to us, but don't make me uncomfortable. Mm. Because if you don't make me uncomfortable, that affects my thinking, that affects my psyche, that affects my emotions. Mm -hmm. Am I talking right up in here? Yes. When things really come at you to make you uncomfortable, they make you, literally, you don't act right, yes. you don't think right, you don't talk right, and you've got to be careful to guard your heart in the moments when God is making you uncomfortable. Uh, when I look at this text, ladies and gentlemen, I came to talk to our church as a whole. This is the beginning of the end for our church and for us as individuals. Because when I look at the text, it says, then we turned and went toward the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Now, for it to say then, that means that there's an implication that something came before it. Now, let me take my time and work for just a moment when it talks about some, you know, that something came before it. Because in chapter number one, we see Moses delivering a message to the people. He tells them that I told you by the word of the Lord that it was time for you to make a move. Uh, and so the Bible said that the people of God got... They, 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 they heard Moses say it's time to move. And in them hearing Moses say it's time to move, they said, okay, well, what do we do? Moses said, all right, go up and take what God has promised you. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is they turn around and say to Moses, let's send spies to see whether the land is good or not. Yes. Now, God already had declared that the land was good. So why do you need to send spies up to figure things out? That's part of our problem, saints of God. Yeah. When God is saying it's time for you to do something different, yeah. we make the mistake of trying to figure out how it's going to work for us. Yeah. None of y'all, just me. I, you, got, you sit there and you try to put it all together and work it and figure it all out. For how, how is this going to work? God didn't tell you to figure it out. He just said, move. And to move requires, it demands that you're going to trust him. Amen. And that's a hard thing sometimes when you're up against something that is bigger than you. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but there's somebody in here who's up against some stuff that is bigger than you. It might be in your body. You're up against some stuff that's bigger than you. Doctor said it's not curable, but it's bigger than you. And so God is saying, don't worry about all that. I got you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So now the Bible said they decided uh, we'll send the spies. Y'all know the story. Spies went in. Ten of them came back and said, there's no way we can take it. Two of them came back and said, let's go get it. Well, the problem we have is you got to check who you're listening to. That's right. 
you got to check who you've got in your ear in the moments when God is trying to bring your life into progression. When God is trying to bring the church into progression, you got to check who's in your ear. Because when Bishop starts making changes and doing things differently, then you question, well, why is he doing it that way? Or well, we didn't always do it. Well, how are you going to get to your promise, man, if you get stuck in doing things the way you've always done it? How in your family are you going to get to your promise, man, if you get stuck in doing it the way you've always done it? How in your personal life are you going to get to your promise, man, if you get stuck in doing things the way you've always done it? God is declaring today, I am commanding change over your life. God's demanding change. And so they decided, well, we can't take it. And they had the wrong people in their ear. When it comes to church, Elder Larry, the problem we have is when things start changing and things start flowing and moving in a different direction, then folk get together. You know, they're committee. Yeah. Oh, I'm not talking. Yeah. Even in small churches, there's the committee. Uh-huh. They get together, they start talking. Well, I don't understand why they do that. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do this and we're going to be able to. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not for you to understand it. It's for you to trust God and the leader that God has put over you that God is going to take us somewhere that we've got to go. God's trying to progress you and you sit there they're talking to the wrong people. You're talking to the ten and not the two. I don't have time to talk to the ten anymore. Uh-huh. Just give me the two. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, it's funny, it's funny because when you start talking about the number two, two has two things. Number one, the number two is the number of witness. Because uh-huh. <laughs> you know the Bible does say, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Two is the number of witness. So all I need is if you can come into agreement with me for whatever I'm standing and believing for, I guarantee you something can move for us. It's a bad thing when husbands and wives aren't in agreement. It's a bad thing when the spirit of the house isn't in agreement. And you better be careful of the voices that you let talk in your house, in your ear, because they will affect everything in your environment. The voices you let talk, oh, can I go deeper? Some of the voices you let talk in your ear, they seem spiritual. Come on. Oh, y'all not talking. They're your prayer partners. And they act like they got the answer from God, but the reality is they don't have the answer from God. They'd rather give you the easy answer, the comfortable answer, the one that you want to hear, rather than the thing that God is really saying concerning you. Amen. Amen. I don't want those kind of people. No. God. Sometimes I need somebody in my life, Sister Rosa, who will actually take the time if need be and cut me and tell me, God says, don't go left, go right. Or when I want to move, they tell me, no, God said, stand still. Can, can I work right here? I remember I remember a moment where I wanted to sue somebody for some stuff that they did to me. I mean, I was ready. And then I called my, my legal assistant, and she was ready to do the paperwork. She said, yeah, you need to get that. You need to handle this. And all of a sudden, I'll never forget one night I was in a service, and I was at the altar worshiping God. And while I was down at the altar on my face, God said, if you'll let it go, I'll handle it. I said, God, I don't want to let it go. I want my money. God says, no, if you let it go, I'll handle it. I said, I don't want to let it go because they deserve it, God, because they've been mean to me. They treated me badly. I want them to pay. But God says, if you get them back, then I can't handle it. If you get them back, I can't jump in for you. If you do it, then you move, you block my hand from handling it for you. And one thing about it, if you move out of my way, not only will I handle them, but I'll turn around and I'll bless. So I had to learn how to just let it go. But everybody in my space was around me and they were ready, Elder, and they were ready. They were like, look, yeah, you need to go ahead and handle that. You need to handle your business. You can, if you need me to do it, I'll do it. My legal says, well, I will do it for free. 
when they're ready to do it for you, write the paperwork and do it for free and file it for you. Yes. <laughs> but God said, not so. Because I got to do something in you to show you and to show other people that I'm still God. That's right. That's right. Lord have mercy. Now let me just go. Let me go a little further. So the Bible said that they went and they did not go up like they should have. And when they didn't, after this, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because after they didn't go up, and Moses rebuked them for not going up, then they decided, okay, well now we'll make a move. Uh -huh. Here's the problem. Yeah. In the kingdom, timing is everything. You can miss a window of opportunity in the kingdom all because you're scared or because you're lazy or because you're intimidated. You can miss the opportunity because you say, you, here it is right here, you deal with the what ifs. Am I talking to somebody up in here? Anybody in here deal with some what ifs? What if it doesn't happen? What if God doesn't do it? What if it doesn't turn around? What if, what if, what if? And those are the words that the enemy loves to plague our mind with. What if? Some of you are living in what if right now. Now I'm not telling you don't get life insurance. You should have life insurance. I'm not telling you don't prepare financially for your family. You should prepare for your family. But some of y'all sitting up in here wondering, what if I die tomorrow? I'm going to tell you right this. Now y'all can think what you want to think. Believe like you want to believe. Paul made a declaration. He said the time of my departure is at hand. That means he, and he made an, an acknowledgement and a declaration of when it was his time to go. I'm sorry y'all. I, I, don't, I, I don't believe like traditional church. When it's my time to get up out of here, my plan is I'm going to say, God, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now I'm ready to go. church folks mind because we say we can be out of here tomorrow. I ain't planning to check out of here tomorrow. That's right. Amen. Amen. My Bible says with long life yes, and length of days shall he satisfy me. I plan to live by the book. Amen. Amen. Can I say something else? I don't plan to be sick the whole time I'm doing it either. Amen. Amen. I feel a healing wind just coming Amen. this room. Jesus, I just felt a healing wind come in this room. When I said that, oh, somebody better receive it right now. You're not living sick for the rest of your life. You're not going to be carrying this for the rest of your life. You want to just lift your hand and declare, I'm already healed. Thank you. You know, sometimes it's our unwillingness to make a move that has held us in our wilderness. Now watch this. The Bible says they decided they were going to go up when they wanted to go up because they finally decided when Moses rebuked them, they said, okay, now it must be time for we're going to go on up. And God says, don't go now because I'm not giving you the victory now. And they went up and the Bible said that the Ammonites swarmed on them like bees. Because they didn't move. Because they didn't walk in when God told them to go in. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. When God tells you to pray, you might be missing a moment when you don't go in prayer at that exact moment. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Let me say that one more time. You might be missing a moment when God tells you to pray and you don't pray at that exact moment. And let me just be clear. It might not even be just for you. God might be calling you into prayer That's because right. at that moment, right. there's somebody else that needs you to be praying and interceding. And you done got too busy, too caught up in your own stuff that God can't use you to be an intercessor for the kingdom. Yeah. Somebody's life could be on the line right then while you're sitting there. Do you not know my friend John Carter was in a service a couple of weeks ago and a gunman came into his service brandishing the gun 
wanted to shoot some folk. But at the exact moment when the gunman came in, somebody in another city was in. God had spoken to them and told them to pray. And they were praying and interceding. Didn't even know what they were praying about. But they were praying for John Carter. Y'all not talking to me up in here. I'm trying to tell you that the, the, the timing is important in the kingdom. you got to do it when God says, do it. Some of us, God has told us, change your diet. Mm. Yes. And I'm not throwing no stones. I'm just telling it like God put it in my spirit. Watch this. Some of us, God has told us, change our diet, change our pattern. And in the moment when God speaks certain things to us, there is a grace for that thing to happen. Yes, that's right. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy because you're used to eating what you've been eating. But when God tells you that, there's a window of opportunity because watch this. When you get down the road, and then now you got to deal with certain things in your body that are affected by the way you eat. Now you got to struggle even harder to go through because now your body has all kind of stuff going on that you could have avoided when God first warned you change your pattern. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. You better say that. Come on, man. 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 You could have avoided it. Oh, I feel like preaching. Now. Come on, preach it. Sometimes, I mean, I hear God in my ear. Sometimes God wants you to avoid pitfalls. Yes. I can speak of times when Bishop has said to me, he said, Long, slow down. <laughs> and I had to stop and listen to the voice of wisdom in my ear because if I didn't, in that moment, that moment was the moment for me to start slowing down for a minute. Doesn't mean I got to slow down permanently, but sometimes you need to rest. And God had to use a voice. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hear the Holy Ghost right now. God is saying, I'm trying to use a voice of, re of wisdom and reason in your life. And you don't want to hear them because you don't think that what they have to say is all that important. Ladies and gentlemen, God is trying to speak to you about something. And it's time for you to listen to the voice of God through however he sends it. He could very well be sending it through your child. Oh, y'all don't think God prophesies through children? Y'all yes. don't think God speaks to children? Oh, well, c c go get Samuel. Oh, yes. He does. <sighs> okay, let me leave yes, that alone. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So now let me hurry because the Bible then says that they, they went up and they got swarmed like bees. And so then they hung out in the wilderness for 38 more years. 38 years. Long time, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. 38 years. Hang out in this wilderness. Can I tell you something? In church, we've been taught to get excited about when we're coming out of the wilderness. I came to tell you today, you need to learn to celebrate your wilderness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Long, you better clear that up for me. I'm going to help you in just a second. Yeah. Learn to celebrate your wilderness. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you why you got to learn to celebrate your wilderness. Ladies and gentlemen, because God kept them in the wilderness until everything that needed to die off, died off. Yeah. All right. yeah. 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 <laughs> what you trying to say? God knows how to keep you in your wilderness long enough for the stuff that needs to die off to die off. So I come to tell somebody in here today, there's some things God's been trying to put to death in your life. He said, go ahead and let it die. Quit trying to hold on to the thing that's been holding on to you and let it die. Because if you let it die, you can come out of the wilderness that much sooner. But it took them 38 years for them to get there because everything that was in the wilderness, Bishop, had to die. God says, I'm putting you on hold so some stuff can die off. Yes. Maybe right now you haven't gotten your healing because God's waiting on some stuff to die off. Y'all not talking. Y'all not talking. Maybe you haven't gotten your healing yet because God's waiting on some stuff to die off in you. Maybe your wayward attitude, God wants that to die off from you. Maybe your, watch this, 
your unwillingness to sit still and listen to God. God wants that to die off. So he'll let you be in your wilderness so you can't do a thing. Until <laughs> it dies off. Yeah. Ah, is there anybody in here today who's just making a declaration? I'm just going to go ahead and let it die. Whatever your need is, are you going to go ahead and let it die? Will you let it die? Uh oh, I hear the Holy Ghost. Not only, I, I hear the Lord saying unforgiveness, unforgiveness, unforgiveness. Somebody in here, you're carrying unforgiveness towards somebody. Ah, oh, the Lord says, let it die. Let it die. And so now we round this corner. After all of this experience, the Bible says, then we turned and went by way of the Red Sea. Because God now commands them. He says, now, you've been here long enough. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that can declare and you can hear the voice of God saying, you've been here long enough? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Kingdom life. The voice of the Lord yes. saying to us collectively, you've been here long enough. Yes. We've been having church like we've been having church long enough. Amen. It's been just a few of us long enough. Yes. But in order for that long enough for the beginning of the end to happen, it starts with a decision. Hello? Come on, come on. It starts with a decision. Mm -hmm. We have to make a choice that I have been here. I agree. Watch this. I agree with God. Amen. It's simple. Amen. I agree with God. <laughs> What do you agree? I've been here long enough. Amen. I've thought this way long enough. I've acted this way long enough. I've done this long enough. My marriage has been in this condition long enough. My finances have been in this condition long enough. I'm about to round third base, but I want you to hear something. The Lord said, what you invest in is what you yield a return from. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh -huh. Hello. Amen. What you invest in is what you will yield a return from. This is where my message begins to tie into what Elder Larry said last week about giving. What we invest in is where we're going to see return. The Lord said something to me. He, he reiter reiterated something to me this morning. You might want to write this down. I need you to hear this. The enemy loves making small things look too big to let go. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yeah. He loves making small things look too big to let go. I'm not even talking about sin. I'm talking about seed. Yeah. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I said? I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about seed. He loves making small things look too big to let go. So here, and, and I'm not going to stay on this too long. Elder Larry preached it real good last, last week. But here, God is saying, so this. And the enemy saying, 25 out there. That's too big for you to be sown in church. You don't give a $25 offering today? Don't you dare. That's too big for you. Amen. That devil loves to make small things look too big to let go. But if, now let me preach. 
the other side of it. But if you knew the bigness of the thing that's in the small thing, yeah. you would be willing to let it go every single time. Yeah. <laughs> Look at somebody around you and say, if you knew the bigness in the small thing, you'd be fighting to get it in the ground. Y'all not talking. You be fighting to get that thing in the ground. Why? Can I tell you? Because one seed can produce an orchard. Amen. One thing you do can produce abundance for the rest of your life. And let me go further than just your money. But one thing you invest in in your spirit can produce abundance for the rest of your life. One time of you practicing prayer can produce abundance for the rest of your life. One time of you going on a good times 38. Mm. You get mm, 2 carry 3 152 seasons. Mm. Wow. Here's the problem. With every season there were different things that they experienced. But it's still they were in a cycle. 152 seasons of same old same old. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Looking at the same mountain. Can you imagine what that feels like? So what happens is you become accustomed to where you've been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really basically done, ladies and gentlemen, but you become accustomed mm -hmm. to where you've been. So when we start talking a different language, I'm so accustomed to what I've seen for 38 years. Yeah. Don't make me move. Wow. Don't make me change my position. Don't make me change the way I think. Don't make me, don't, don't do that. Leave me where I've been. Wait a minute. But you've been promised something. Yeah. Mm. Come on, come on. Hey, oh, wait, wait. Y'all feel me this morning? Yeah. Yeah. But you've been promised something. Yes. Why, if you've been promised something so great, yeah. would you sell it for a wilderness experience? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Here God promise you he's going to send you tall, dark, and handsome. I cry when I preach. Don't mind me. But God's going to send you Mr. Right. Going to send you, as they say, Boaz. You know, that's one of the Bible characters. He was a good guy. You know, all this stuff. That's all the women say they want a Boaz because he took care of Ruth all this. Yeah, all that good stuff. But the problem is, you end up with a bozo. <laughs> and you settle for Bozo. Because yeah. one thing about Bozo, Bozo got some of the qualities of a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got some of the qualities of a man. But he does not have the integrity. He's always playing games. That's one thing about a client. He's always playing games, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my point is this. Why would you settle? Boy, you don't have to settle for. Why would you settle to live in a place in your life that you don't have to settle for? Amen. It's the beginning of the end. Some things in your life are at the beginning of the end. I've been in this cycle. Mm -hmm. Long enough. Yeah. I, I, I would shout right here, Elder, because anytime God wants to bring an ending to something or a beginning of something, he makes a declaration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Anytime God wants to bring an ending to something or a beginning yeah. to something, he makes a declaration. How do I know? Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1. And God said, Am I in the book, y'all? Yes. And God said, and to sit the evening and the morning with the first day, you had the furnace, you had this, because what God said. God said. <laughs> the fact that God woke me up and told me to tell you today is the beginning of the end. God has said. Yes. So now, in a lot of areas of your life, it's the beginning of the end. But there must be a decision. He tells them, after he tells them what the declaration is, you've been here long enough, God has said, after he does this, he then gives them instructions. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the next thing you've got to do is pay attention to the instructions. Yeah. You've got to pay attention to the instructions. The instructions matter. Can I show you a secret? Somebody say the details make the difference. Come on, everybody say it with me. Say the details make the difference. The details make the difference. Anybody ever been to a two-star hotel? A day's in? Talk to me. Anybody ever stayed in a day's in? Yes. It, it gets you by. It's okay, right? Yeah. Or something like the days in, you know, Motel 6, Red Roof, whatever. Y'all yeah. know, Mike Hotel. <laughs> I won't tell. <laughs> Peek a yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but when you go to the days in, have, now have any of you ever been to something like an Embassy Suites? Mm. Yeah. Have you been to a Hyatt? Yes. Have you been to a window? Yes. Now, question for you. Is the days in like the window? No. No. It's not. <laughs> is the days in like the height? No. Is the days in like the embassy suites? No. Lord, I hope nobody's watching me on, on, on social media right now and they can't. <laughs> they say, and they call and report me the days in. <laughs> Watch this. This is gonna help somebody. Yeah. Most of the time when you stay in the days in, you stay there because your budget would not allow you. Amen. Right. In other words, because you weren't prepared to make the investment or pay the cost That's right. that it would cost you to get into a window. That's right. That's right. Details make the difference. Yeah. But when 
you go to a good embassy suites, mm -hmm. a good window, mm -hmm. the pillows are fluffier, yeah. the bed feels better, uh -huh. the staff treats you better, <laughs> most of the time. They, you got a nice breakfast down there in the morning. Yeah. They fix an omelet for you and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. You ain't getting an omelet the day then. <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting you're not getting an omelet at the Red Room. Mm -mm. Uh, no. <laughs> you might get a waffle. No. <laughs> As if you fix your own. <laughs> but but here's my point as I close. The details make the difference. Yes. Why would you settle for what you had out there when God wants to bring you into something greater in your life? Amen. Watch. The difference between staying at the Days Inn and the Wyndham is the investment. Mm. Yeah. Will you pay the price? I was laying there, and the Spirit of God began to say to me this morning, he said, Long, he said, I need my people to hear that I want them to make an investment because I've declared that it's the beginning of the end in their life. Yeah. Some of you, by next week, you will have forgotten what I preached this morning. You got to make the investment this week of going back over this again and again. And saying to yourself again, again, oh no, it's the beginning of the end. We ain't keep, we ain't gonna keep arguing like this. We're not gonna keep being in, in dysfunction in our family. I'm not gonna keep going through this anymore. Yes. That's right. I'm at the beginning of the end. the end. And I'm making a decision. I've been around this mountain. Oh, no. Watch this. The last verse I read, the last part of it says, now turn northward. Yeah. Last time I checked, I said, I can, I can really preach that part right there, what you just said, that turn. <laughs> I can really just work that, that turn. Yes. Turn and go north. Yes. See, if you're going to do it, you got to make a turn. Yeah. Mm. But he says, go north. No. Go. Uh, Y'all catching me? Uh, uh. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> go. Thank you. Uh. Tell somebody, up is a decision. Up is a decision. <laughs> I'm about to go up. In my health, I'm about to go up. In my finances, I'm about to go up. In every area of my life, I'm about to go up. Now, it doesn't mean there won't be battles. Because on their way, they had to deal with battles. I wish I had time to tell you as they got into, as we got into the text further down, go read it for yourself in Deuteronomy chapter 2. The Bible said that one of the kings that came up against them, check this out, y'all. It's going to bless you. One of the kings that they needed to get through his land and get some stuff from, he said, it says God hardened the king's heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yes, God did. Mm -hmm. God did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes you think your boss is against you because... They're just against you. They don't like you. Could it be that sometimes God is hard in their heart? Because mm -hmm. God's getting ready to promote you in some way of your life. Y'all are hear me. Could it be that God hardens Pharaoh's heart? Let me go back to Pharaoh since that's the one y'all know about. Could it be that God hardens Pharaoh's heart? Yeah. Just so he can bring you out of Egypt? Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Could it be that's the reason why God, watch this, and not only did God harden that particular king's heart in Deuteronomy chapter 2, wasn't Pharaoh, but Deuteronomy 2 was another king, but could it be the reason why it was because God wanted to show you another way he's going to give you victory? You have seen God blow your mind before. Yes, sir. That's right. You have seen God yes. bless your socks off before. Yes, yes. Sir. But sometimes God may harden the heart of the king or that thing that is standing against you. He may make it even harder against you just so he can show you another way.
say he's about to blow your mind. He wants you to know. Come on. Can I give y'all a reason to shout as I go? I'm going to give you a reason to shout right here. God is so awesome that what he's about to do in your life is he'll heart the heart of the king. That way, it'll upset you enough to fight. And when you fight, you're going to get victory. And when you get victory, and the way God gives you victory, in another way you can expect, it's going to make you praise him some more. But ladies and gentlemen, when you release a new praise, guess what? God's getting ready to release a whole other blessing. God! Come on. Do you see it? God is letting you walk through this. Yes. So you can get victory in this, yes. which creates another reason. See, God wanted to create another reason for you to praise him because it expresses your, your praise expresses your faith. And if your praise is an expression of your faith, ladies and gentlemen, guess what's about to happen next? If you praise him here, yes. come on. If this happened yes. and I didn't like it, 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 if I got hit, let me talk to Minister Sandra, if I got hit in my body. King's heart got hard. Doctor said they don't know what to do about the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, when God shows up and blows the doctor's mind, what's Sandra gonna do? Sandra's gonna praise him all over again. Come on, come on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And because God knew that she was gonna praise him when she got through it, and even while she was going through it, he had already put in motion a plan that he was gonna bless her all over again. There's something more all the way over here that she could not see. But God said, I had to let her go through this right here so I could get her to right here so she would praise me. Because in this praise is another level of victory. In this praise is another level of blessing. I hear God say, tell somebody, get ready to be rewarded.